Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and on today's vlog, we will be looking further into Matt Baker's Levy family and finally finding out, were they Jewish? In the last episode, we took a look into Matt Baker's fifth great-grandfather, Gershom Levy. But in this episode, we're going to start out by taking a look at Gershom's father, Nathan Levy. Now, Nathan seems to be a very interesting character, and while I was able to find a couple of different stories and narratives about his life, there seemed to be very little documentation backing that up, or at least citations and documentation that I could find. Now going to Nathan's page on Ancestry, we see that there is a lot attached, but most of them are stories and we do see some grave photos. But then the only real document we see connected isn't technically a document, it's just a find a grave link. And when you actually go to the link, you see that there is nothing there. And now this can be a common thing that people will find for ancestors that are from the 18th, 17th, 16th centuries and earlier, where there's not a whole lot known about them, but there's different narratives. And a lot of times you'll get different stories from different places, but there will often be little documentation that you can really rely upon. But of all these stories, there were a few general consistencies throughout. To start, it's said that Nathan was born in Philadelphia in 1719 or 1720, but it's not for certain who his father is. Now, there are two main contenders for who Nathan's father is. It's either Asher Levy or sometime Asser Levy, A-S-S-E-R, or his brother Nathan Levy both being children of Moses Raphael Levy. Another common thread with this story is that Nathan was Jewish, both of his parents being Jewish, and most importantly, his mother being Jewish. But the story goes that after moving to Halifax, Nova Scotia, he then married a woman who was not Jewish, and not only that, he also converted, and because of this, he was then written out of all the family information back in Philadelphia. Basically, he was disowned by his American Jewish family. But this is one of those facts that I have not been able to find anything that really says that that's true. Even if he was written out of a lot of the family documents, it would be surprising that you couldn't find any mention of him at all. This woman Nathan married was a woman named Sarah Dunn, and they were married in 1759. They subsequently had two children named Moses and Rachel, but in 1667, both children unfortunately died of typhoid fever, which was very common in Nova Scotia in the 18th century. Four years later, in 1771, Sarah would die during childbirth, of which the child would die as well, and both Sarah and the child were buried in Halifax. Two years later, in 1773, the 54-year-old Nathan Levy would then go on to marry a 17-year-old by the name of Susanna Tufts. Nathan and Susanna had four children before Nathan would die in 1787, and Susanna would then die just a few years later in 1792. Something we also discussed in the last episode because it left Gershom and his other young siblings parentless. Being that Nathan's father is said to have either been Nathan Levy or Asher Levy, both the sons of Moses Raphael Levy, knowing that they were Jews in early colonial times, I decided to take a look in the collection known as the AJHS Oppenheim Collection, which has a bunch of information and folders about Jews in colonial America. But on Ancestry, it's indexed, so we're able to just do a quick search, and doing just a search for Levy, we see a lot of information, but most importantly, we wanna see Asher Levy or Nathan Levy because we wanna see if there's any information in those files about their children and would we be able to actually connect them to their children. So scrolling down, we see that we actually have three records for Nathan Levy. Now we see content years 1739 to 1753, then 1753 and another 1753. Now this 1753 year is really important because the Nathan Levy that's believed to be our Nathan Levy's father 
died in 1753. So this is the correct Nathan Levy. Because even though there aren't that many Jews in the U.S. at this time, we can take a look and see, well, there were a lot of Levies living in colonial America, even if there wasn't a huge population. So we can't always assume that they're all the same family. So looking at those records, we just click that little button on the side and we can literally go through the folder. Now, unfortunately, a lot of this is really difficult to read, and it mostly seemed to be about Moses Raphael Levy's estate and how the inheritance was divvied up, and it seemed to be that there were issues between the family and Nathan Levy, who was in Philadelphia, which matches up with our thought that our Nathan Levy was born in Philadelphia. And it does talk about other members of the family, but all I could really find were mentions of Nathan's siblings and some other older relatives as well, but nothing really about his children. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to really figure out whether or not Nathan was the son of Nathan Levy, but it certainly did seem possible being that he was in the right place at the right time. Now here we do see a typed up version of one of the letters from 1739. So at this point, our Nathan Levy would have been about 19 or 20. As well, he hadn't made his way to Nova Scotia at this time. It's said that he arrived in 1750 with his brother Isaac Levy and another man named Nathan Hart. But as I stated, this letter seems to mostly talk about the will and testament of Moses Levy the inheritance to his descendants, as well as other information related to the estate, mostly discussing how Nathan Levy and Isaac Levy have handled it. At points, making it seem almost as if Isaac and Nathan had purposely left New York for Philadelphia just so they couldn't be held responsible for what was going on with the estate. Now, I can't say that for sure because for one, I'm not a lawyer, I don't understand legalese, and even more, understanding 18th century legalese is even more difficult. So this is probably something I would need someone with a better expertise of this time and how things were handled to go through and give a breakdown of what exactly is going on and being said. Now, back at our search page for all the Levies, I didn't see any Asher Levy or Asher Levy here. So going to the second page, we'll see if we can find it. And going up, we do see Asher Levy and Asher Levy, 1728 and 1758. And we see another 1758. Now I'm not going to keep clicking through all the photos. We don't need to see everything because I really wasn't able to find anything from this. But since I wasn't able to find anything in those files, would I be able to find anything in Nova Scotia records that might connect or give more information? So looking at Nathan's arrival in Nova Scotia, he arrived in 1750 with his brother Isaac Levy and a man by the name of Nathan Hart. So this does give us a little bit more to look for because if we are looking for Nathan Levy, we want to look for one where he has a brother named Isaac. Now, I don't know where the information came from about Nathan having a brother named Isaac and him coming along with a Nathan Hart in 1750, but that seemed to be a consistent thing throughout all of the stories that I was reading. Another common theme that I saw across a lot of these was that Nathan had a lot of land transactions in Nova Scotia. So I wondered, would I actually be able to find any of these land transactions? Now to find out more about the land deeds for Halifax, Nova Scotia and what was available, I went to one of the best genealogical sources for this type of thing, the Family Search Wiki. Now the Family Search Wiki is a wiki dedicated to telling you the information of genealogical records associated with certain places. It can be as broad as an entire continent, and it can get as specific as a single town. And some of these are extremely extensive. And a lot of times they're really easy to find because all you have to do is go to Google, type in family search wiki, and then whatever town you're looking for, and you'll often get something popping up. So all I did was type in Nova Scotia land deeds into Google, and then down here we see Family Search Wiki, and it takes us to this page, which gives us a lot of information, including a bunch of links to online resources. Now, knowing that Nathan is in Halifax, I went to Nova Scotia Halifax County deed indexes, 
And this is a collection where you can't search through it, but you can browse through it. And this is an index. So this should help us find any land deeds connected to Nathan Levy, but we'll have to use this to then find the actual land deeds. So that's something we'd have to look into a little further. So going to browse all 23,000 images, we can see a whole big list, but we know it's gonna be this first one, 1749 to 1959. And all we need to do is zoom out and it is way down there because this is a big alphabetical list. But one important thing is that it's only a grantee to grantor. So that means that it's not listed alphabetically by the grantor. So if you are looking for the grantor, it's going to be a lot harder to find that. Now, looking at the available links here, there are some grantor indexes, but all of them are from the 20th century. If you notice, all of them say grantee to grantor index. Now, instead of boring you with me clicking through all of this stuff to then find this page, I'm just bringing us right here, but you can see image 416 out of 765. So it can be difficult to go through and find things, but we see there's multiple Levy's and we see Nathan Levy, Nathan Levy, Nathan Levy, three of them one going to James Abrahams, two to Thomas Adams. And then here we can see the years. So 1755, 1779, and 1783. But also we see Isaac Levy. So my assumption is this is probably the Isaac Levy mentioned coming with Nathan, who would be his brother. So this would be someone we'd wanna look into as well. And his are 1750 and 1757 which match up with the story. So it's possible that when they arrived in 1750, they were quick to get on buying land and starting to exchange it, which does make sense because they were already successful merchants. But we do also see some other Levies, an Anne Levy and a Titus Levy. Now the names are spelled differently, but that's not very uncommon for that time. And even nowadays, it's not uncommon to have two different sets of cousins where they decide to spell or pronounce their names a little differently. So this would be something we might wanna look into as well. But now that we have some information on the family, how do we find the actual deeds? Well, going back to the Canada, Nova Scotia, Halifax County deed indexes, notice this button here, how to use this collection. And when we click that, it's going to take us to a completely new page. And in this page, we see in the contents, one which is what do I do next? And clicking that, there's a lot of different information, but the most important is the family search catalog. And even more important than that, the registry of deeds. So here we have that page registry of deeds and scrolling down is when we see all of the available deed registers that we can take a look at. Now, obviously, we don't want to look at all of these. This is a lot of stuff. But we know that Nathan Levy was in Nova Scotia from 1750 until 1787, although we know he eventually made his way to Lunenburg County from Halifax County. But we can still take a look through and we kind of have an idea of where we want to look. So clicking on this camera on the right, this is going to take us to a similar page as we saw before. And once again, we are in one of those positions where we have to basically go through every single one and try to find our way. But one interesting thing about this set of records is while it is slightly unorganized in a way, it also is slightly organized in another way. And in a few places, there are some indexes. So here we actually see that there's an index by surnames alphabetically. And once again, it's listing the grantee to the grantor. And so we can click through and see, do we see the name Levy? And lucky for us, it's actually pretty easy handwriting to read, which can vary for around this time because sometimes it can be extremely difficult to read. And here we see one right off the bat, call us to Levy. And we see number 16, page six. So going back out, we can kind of follow the alphabet here by looking at the top of the pages. I don't know if everyone can see that, but there's kind of like a letter at the top. So this would be the last one. We see that Z at the top. So if that's the case, page six, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
we click in and looking down john collis to isaac levy so this isn't nathan levy this is isaac levy and going to the date we see april 19th 1750 so this would have been done pretty quickly after they arrived if the story is true and as well it gives some more information because it says by articles of agreement dated the 19th day of april 1750 between john collis of halifax of the one part and isaac levy of rhode island merchant of the other part so we get the confirmation he's a merchant but now all of a sudden it says that he's born in Rhode Island, which doesn't make sense exactly with what we know about the family. Being that Nathan Levy, Isaac's supposed brother, was born in Philadelphia. We know Nathan Levy's supposed father, Nathan, was also in Philadelphia. But being that this is a merchant family, it is possible maybe he was born in Rhode Island. And merchant families often are traveling a lot because, well, they're merchants. Now, unfortunately, looking through this, it didn't give any anything that really confirmed whether or not this was the Isaac Levy whose brother to Nathan Levy but it does confirm that there was an Isaac Levy in Halifax Nova Scotia by 1750. Now going back to our list we can go back up and we're going to go here to E because when we look at E and we go down to the bottom we see Elliot to Levy. Now here it's number 31 on page 403. Well, it's going to be really hard to count 403 pages from that one page. So there's a little bit of a trick that you can do. So going back out, we go to that first page of the documents. So this is the first one. And being that we're looking for 403, well, what's 143 plus 403? 546. So that's the page we're going to go to. And we go to 546. We see page 414 number 42 so we've gone just a little bit too far so we want to go back a few pages because we want to find number 31 so here we've gone back page 403 and when we go down we see thomas elliott to nathan levy so more than likely this is our nathan levy unless there just happens to be another nathan levy living in halifax nova scotia but remember how for the last deed we saw that isaac was isaac of rhode island well what's it say for nathan and we can see jumping ahead right here between francis elliot carpenter of halifax of the one part and Nathan Levy of the same place of the other part. So if he's of the same place, then that would mean of Halifax County. So does that mean that this is our Nathan Levy? Does it mean that our Nathan Levy wasn't born in Philadelphia and was actually born in Halifax? Or is there something else going on? And to be honest, there is no true answer that I can pull out at this time. A big part being that what it's saying here isn't really giving us solid information about what it means. So it says of Halifax. Well, does of Halifax just mean where the residence is? Does it mean that that's where he was born? Does that mean that he just lives there? Or could there even be a whole nother meaning that's a little bit beyond what we can guess just because of the nuances of these actual documents. So this goes back to the same question with Isaac Levy. Was he born in Rhode Island? Did he actually live in Rhode Island? Did he grow up in Rhode Island? So unfortunately, these land deeds didn't give us a lot of new information. It kind of just added more questions. But it at the very least does confirm that there was a Nathan Levy living in Halifax, Nova Scotia in the 1750s. There was an Isaac Levy living in Halifax, Nova Scotia, or at least buying land in Halifax, Nova Scotia as early as 1750. And as well, I was also able to find information about a Nathan Hart living in Halifax in the 1750s as well. So there definitely were three men named Nathan Levy, Isaac Levy, and Nathan Hart. But there is a question, were the Levy's brothers? Did they all come together? And is that story about 1750 and providing provisions for British troops? true now one thing i do want to mention here is that my research is quite limited in this at this moment because i am in north carolina and this is something that would best be done by 
going to Philadelphia, researching a lot of the archives there, especially in relation to the Levy family, going to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Lunenburg to look at those records to see, is there anything not digitized that might hold the key to connecting those families? But even with all of that, there still was the question, was Nathan Levy truly Jewish? And being that we can't find anything to confirm that through the paper trail, Let's see what we can do with DNA. Now, the first thing we'd want to do is take a look at Matt's DNA. Does he get any Jewish admixture? But his most recent fully Jewish ancestor was Nathan Levy, who's his sixth great grandfather. And once you're out that far, it's a high possibility you're going to have ancestors that you didn't inherit any DNA from. So the fact that Matt wasn't getting any Jewish percentages in his ethnicity admixtures from the different DNA testing sites didn't necessarily mean he didn't have Jewish ancestry. So we needed to turn to a few other tricks. And one of those is looking at his genetic matches, his relatives. And since we have a really well built out family tree and a lot of the families in Nova Scotia seem to have those as well, we wanted to find a bunch of relatives from the Levy family and see, was there a common theme of Jewish admixtures within the family? And in doing that and looking at dozens of profiles, it seemed that the majority of cousins, especially those still with the Levy name, had about 3% or less Jewish DNA in their admixtures. So this consistency certainly points to it being true. But I took it a step further because Matt has tested on all these sites. He was able to test on 23andMe, which has one of the best genetic match comparison tools in the entire DNA world. And one of the pieces of information that you can get from this genetic match comparison is the haplogroups of your genetic matches. So I took a look at all of his Levy cousins who still had the Levy name. Then I scrolled down to the part talking about their haplogroup and took a look to see, did they all have the same haplogroup? And did it correlate to any Jewish lines, even more specifically the Levite line because they were Levies. And what I found was all of these Levy men had the haplogroup RCTS6. And this is extremely important because it is the known Levite Ashkenazi haplogroup. Now this is not the in-depth Y-DNA testing which can be done through Family Tree DNA that allows for actual Y testing matches so you can see your Y chromosome matches, but that's something that would be immensely useful to further this research. So I've actually been in touch with some of Matt's Levy cousins, the big hope being that by them doing a Y-DNA test on Family Tree DNA, we can get the matches they have to see can we tie them to any other descendants of Moses Raphael Levy? And a big question I wonder is if we do this really in-depth testing, especially a big Y kit, could we figure out who Nathan's father truly is? Now, unfortunately, this is the end of the season, tracing the family tree of YouTuber Matt Baker from the channel Useful Charts. But be sure to join us on the next YouTuber family tree season, when we take a look into the family tree of Joseph Hall Patton, who's better known as Cypher from The Cynical Historian. And also be sure to check out all the previous episodes of my YouTuber Family Tree series, which you can check out at this playlist right here. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. And you can follow me at Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at genie vlogger i'm the genie vlogger see you in my next video